Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. I'm here this very beautiful um, afternoon to talk about Apostle Suleiman's miracle money uh, and everything else in between. Let us start with a prayer. Father, I thank you for the gift of another day. I thank you for how far we have come as a people. I thank you for the gift of knowledge, love, and understanding. I ask for mercy. I ask for direction. I ask for your peace and protection. And I ask for revelation and wisdom. In Yahushua's name, I pray. And all the people in the house said a big, big amen. I would be a liar and a hypocrite if I tell you today that I'm just hearing about Apostle Suleiman's Miracle Money video for the first time. And as much as I possibly try, I try not to be a hypocrite. I heard about this um, Miracle Money video. I saw some clips and I tried to reach out to him. He was apparently in, on tour then in Turkey. Then I saw him post something on his page. So I reached out to him again and then we had the conversation. We spoke for about an hour. He explained the doctrine to me. Do I agree with it? I don't think so. In principle, we can disagree doctrinally. One person I'm closest to doctrinally with regards to um, how close we are doctrinally is Reno Amokri. But we disagree on many things. We disagree on creation, the Genesis account. I have a totally different opinion. He calls Christ Yeshua. I choose to use the original word Yahushua. So it means that people can disagree doctrinally. Let me give you an example. A lot of you don't do any Bible history. So you don't realize that there were three main factions in Christianity upon the death of Christ. And of course, his resurrection. There was the Pauline faction. The church in Antioch. Then there was the James the Just faction, the church in Jerusalem. And there was Peter who was torn in between. James believed that some aspects of the law must be preserved. Paul believed that no aspect of the law should be preserved because if you preserve the law according to his account in Galatians chapter 3 and Galatians chapter 5, what you're doing is you're cutting yourself away from Christ. You can read Galatians chapter 5 verse 4 specifically and Galatians chapter 3 verse 10. This would throw some light onto that. So it is impossible for us 2,000 years later to be in total doctrinal alliance if our ancestors, the very ones Christ walked with, as soon as he left, there was already confusion and disagreement. And if you read Galatians chapter 2 from verse 11 to 17, Paul addresses Peter's hypocrisy with regards to eating with the Gentiles. Especially when James the Just's friends came over, Peter stopped eating with the Gentiles. So it was an issue. Why am I saying all this? Apostle Suleiman can be my friend just the way Paul and Peter were friends and brothers and we can disagree doctrinally. He explained the miracle money to me. In the interpretation, people can swing to it left or swing to it right. But to create a doctrine out of it is where I draw the line. So I called my brother up and say, brother, we agree on many things and we disagree on many things. In this particular instance, yes, you can have some idea here and some idea there, but I wouldn't make it a doctrine. But always remember that we're dealing with Christianity and Christianity is filled with belief systems. Now, let me take it a little further. I will never support the muting of journalists. I will never stand and allow a journalist who is doing their job to be frustrated, to be silent when you criticize a doctrine. Christianity was birthed in criticism of Judaism. Christ criticized the teachings of the Pharisees and the scribes. And 
as it was birthed and handed over to the first church, there were disagreements doctrinally. James Fox Parham and William J. Seymour that started the Pentecostal movement in 1900 did not benefit from it until the crop of preachers we have today. So whatever you sow is going to grow. Whether it is a good thought, whether it is a rebellion, whether it is an attempt to, uh, to correct something. And remember, the Pentecostal church broke out of the Methodist church. So we are at a point now when people, in my humble opinion, are beginning to take criticism to an extreme. And if these men are listening, they're watching our videos, forget, or if they're not watching it, their immediate teams are watching it. And the feedback is getting to them. That is why you see a geo come and say something, and then tomorrow he will address that same thing he said. Why? Because he's gotten feedback. It's, you also need to understand that these geos are not our mates. They're our father's mates. Try correcting your father at home and see how difficult it is. Sit down with your papa we born you. Make you try correct something that is glaringly wrong. You will struggle with it. That's how that generation is. We are not going to just carry all of them and throw them in a lake. We have to keep doing our work. If you see something that's erroneous in the body of Christ, address it by all means. If you're going to call the person out, call the person out by all means. I have no problem with you calling anybody out. Apostle Suleiman, I don't agree with your money, miracle money doctrine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you now say Apostle Suleiman is a friend to a hush puppy. Let me read it because I saw this on Ubi Franklin's blog. I want to read Ubi's caption. It says, nobody arrested him for miracle money. He called Apostle Suleiman Hush Puppy's partner and fraudster. That is no longer, if this is what the guy really said, this is not criticism. This is not at a, addressing a doctrine. This is making a claim. And let me tell you something. Forget Apostle Suleiman. As you, they see me, so I did look for one person where I go catch on top of that Hush Puppy matter. And you are going to come and prove before a court that he gave me one dollar. You know how annoying it is that he frees. You must have collected transport money from Hush Puppy. Is everybody poor? The same thing people will come out and say now that he frees. You are defending Apostle Suleiman. He has given you money. I have never seen Apostle Suleiman's 50 cob. I say it and I beat my chest. Apostle Suleiman to me is worth a million dollars a month. Why? He is the link between where we stand as the critics of the church establishment and the church establishment itself. To me, just having somebody in there who can paint a picture of what we stand for to them and what they stand for to us so that we can be more informed in our criticism or in our creation of doctrines is worth the, to the body of Christ a million dollars a month. If I could pay Apostle Suleiman one million dollars a month, I would pay him. Of course, I don't have that kind of money. So my friendship with him is not, not, not everybody is poor. Get your minds out of that gutter. And this is one of the reasons why I refuse to address this issue. Because the next thing is, you know, as long as I don't come out and say Apostle Suleiman is wicked, I've collected money from him. In my understanding of the doctrine, I don't believe in miracle money. As a doctrine, I don't believe in it. But I also will never agree with somebody making claim, claims like he needs to be in a mental institution. Like, seriously? And you expect him not to arrest you? Now, with the arrest, I'm also torn. Because there are two sides to the arrest. There is the, okay, police can all of a sudden respond and work, which doesn't happen in all instances. But we cannot ignore the fact that if you say somebody is Hush Puppy's friend and co-conspirator, you have to prove it too. 
I never see the person where I won't hold me. If I catch you, that, you see, most of the people that come, uh, you, you, you can't. Now, one person will go talk, and one person where we know in house. <laughs> that money where you think say hush puppy pay me, now you go pay me in damages. So let us learn to draw the line. In my humble opinion, if I were to advise Apostle Suleiman as a friend, I'll say, Apostle Suleiman, don't arrest the guy. Take him to court. But by all means, take him through a legal process. All those accusations that he made of you, let him come and defend them. He who alleges must prove. If Apostle Suleiman had called me and said, ah, somebody criticized him about it, I said, Apostle, nobody go, not everybody go agree with your doctrine. You get many things where they preach where you don't go agree with. You get many things where they preach where I don't go agree with. Doesn't mean we have to be enemies. Imam and Pope, they hug. No means say they are aligned doctrinally in any way or form. It's humanity first before religion. But somebody needs to address the decadence in the criticism. Criticize. Which one is slander? You don't like that Daddy Freeze went and had an interview with Hush Puppy and had dinner with him. You don't like it. Come up with a video. In your video, say, I respect Daddy Freeze because he used to be this and this. I no longer... There's one Ghanaian guy that I was watching. I've forgotten his name. Um, sometimes he comes with dreadlocks. I forgot. He used to criticize me. Sometimes I watch the channel. I'm like, okay. There was one he criticized me and said, the Daddy Freeze of before is no longer the Daddy Freeze of now. And I thought about it. I sat there and said, okay, let me evaluate this. The Daddy Freeze of before is no longer the daddy freeze of now, which is true. When I started my ministry, social media was new and fresh. Even we did not understand it. We didn't understand what was cyber bullying, cyber stalking. We didn't understand. We just thought it was an opportunity to express ourselves. There are things I said three years ago that I dare not say now. Because the laws are tightening on social media. Twitter was banned how many weeks ago? So, yes, I have changed, but for many reasons. One, the people I am fighting with have started addressing a few of the issues that I was complaining about. When was the last time you saw a pastor climb the pulpit and say, give me $5,000, like they used to do <laughs> weekly before? Give me $10,000. The ones that want to do it will say, off the mic. I'll be off the camera. Let's go off camera. So, if it's like you they beat Pekin, say the Pekin now lo do. The Pekin they come 30th for class. You beat them for one month, it come 20th. Then it come 18th. But you see, they beat them. It gets to a stage where you say, okay, there's an improvement. Let us see this improvement through. But if we continue with the fire we started with, we end up achieving nothing. There's a sermon I preached last week, and I would like you to get your hands on that sermon. It's very, very important because many people don't understand what the backfire effect is. I taught it as a whole sermon. You see, when you come to people with new facts, new ideas, and new uh, evidence that goes against their belief system, the tendency is not for them to support you. The tendency is for them to be even strengthened in their beliefs. Is a psycholog Anybody who's a psychologist can bear me out on this. Their belief system is strengthened. It's in psychology, it's called belief perseverance. So our work, if all we did was bash the pastors, by now the backfire effect has set in. And not only are they ignoring the facts that we're giving them, that's the congregation now, it's now making their faith even stronger. So you keeping the rebellion so violent 
permanently is only going to work against you because those people who are deeply entrenched in these belief systems are going to hold their belief system even more believing that you're fighting their belief system not because you are provide not that you're giving them evidence to discredit the belief system that you're just fighting against them and what they believe in and they're going to hold tight to it so you are not offering the body of Christ or Nigeria any service, rather a disservice. If you cannot now start streamlining to avoid the backfire effect and the effect of belief perseverance. So, to cut a long story short, criticize a pastor if you want, but look at the pastor's age. The Bible is clear. He says, when you talk to a man who is your father's age, talk to him how you talk to your father. I made those mistakes in the past. I'm guilty. Oh, yes, I did. If I want to address something Baba Diboye said or something Bishop Oedeko said, I will greet him first. Eka Sansa, Bishop. Abi Jiu. This thing that you said, I disagree with it. And here are the reasons why. Do you think that if I come here and I start insulting them and it gets to them, they'll never listen. Your message is lost in the insults. Your message is lost in the... Somebody comes to me and says, Daddy Fridge, you collected money from Posh Property. If it's a live interview, I'll walk out of that interview immediately. So whatever it is that you wanted to hear from me, you're not going to get it unless you are doing this for money, which is what many YouTubers... Oh, yes, you get hits. Many YouTubers are doing this for money. It's not like they care about the body of Christ. If that is your goal... Oh, yes, you're going to keep hitting on them because you're getting views and clicks. But if your goal is to reform the body of Christ and address deep-rooted doctrinal issues, by now you should know that the method should have entered phase two. Dialogue. It's not every time that you go and bring your missile out. Discuss. They are watching. They are seeing you criticize them. They're not going to change because it's not easy for them to change. But you want them to start the adjustment gradually. And when the pressure is on them, because you are now convincing their followers that, look, this thing your papa said is wrong. Look at it like this, look at it like this, look at it like this. And they can now take the feedback to their papa. Papa, you said this. And then the papa cannot defend what he said and starts getting, then they'll now start looking at the papa in another way. So, whichever way you're doing correct constructive criticism done in love is going to have a greater effect than slander and calling people names because you want to have views. Do you want to spend all the money you make from your views on lawyers? So, here's my long and short of it. Do I agree with the money miracle doctrine? No, I don't. Does that stop me from being friends with Apostle Suleiman? No, it doesn't. Did I call him and express my belief system to him? Yes. Do I agree with a YouTuber saying he's Hush Puppy's friend and a business associate? Or, or, or let me read it to you exactly how it is in the, in the paper. You can find it on Ubi Franklin's page. Apostle Suleiman is evil. Christianity is a stupid religion. That's hate speech. <laughs> Apostle Suleiman is crazy and mentally challenged and should be admitted in a mental home. That's powerful. Though. Apostle Suleiman is a certified thief. For you to say that, you have to have the certification of his thief, you know. Listen, no. he said his uh, teachings of miracle money is a scam, is fallacious, is that. I don't I would not criticize like that, but I will look away if I'm criticized like that. Okay, my doctrine, when I came out and I said Christ is Lucifer, did they not call me all sorts of names, including Antichrist? It's a doctrine. You will, get, you will get a backlash. I understand that. But when it now comes to things like he's a bandit, he's an idiot. He is evil. He is mentally challenged. He worked hand in hand with Hushpop, if this is really true. And is who is currently incarcerated. That he's a certified, he worked hand in hand. These are things that if you, these are uh, claims that if you make, you must substantiate with proof. 
So let's criticize. Yes, criticize all you want, but be constructive in your criticism. And please, I beg you in God's name, draw the line between slander and constructive criticism. I'm Daddy Freeze. These are my thoughts on the trending matter. Take care and God bless you all.